welcome. Welcome to you, Jeff. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Peggy. You know, the document imaging and scanning element of our entire practice has been uh, around and has been part of what we've talked about for so, so long. And the solutions that are designed for it are really mature, extremely mature. Uh, but I'm sure many of you can't get the images of all those boxes uh, stacked in the IRS cafeteria uh, uh, that they've been showing recently. It's just, uh, it's really unfathomable thinking uh, how far we've come, really. But of course, for so, so many of us, I'll just catch up here, for so many of us, uh, capture was almost an afterthought. It was really something that focused primarily on paper, uh, paper documents. It was um, something focused more on archiving the document, meaning, you know, taking that picture of the paper in order to store it somewhere, hopefully uh, shredding the paper afterwards. Uh, we know that's not done. Um, it was more about the archiving of it than the extraction of that data from the document. It was usually something that you did at some point after information had already entered your organization. And it was usually done in the context of just one particular business process or uh, just based on the needs of a particular uh, department and heaven forbid any kind of customization uh, was really needed. And if your organization is like so many, you probably have a hybrid of paper and digital inputs. Um, for things like invoices or contracts, um, claims of all sorts, receipts, shipment documents, it goes on and on. And you're probably going to have a hybrid situation for the foreseeable future. And this obviously means that all of these disparate and varied um, digital and paper streams somehow have to come together in a single stream so that you can really manage it efficiently. Businesses today are faced with increased demands to capture information from these multiple uh, applications and channels. And we suggest that you try to do that at the very first point of ingestion. As soon as it, it it comes into a process or to your organization. As a result, most organizations today, at least ideally, are looking for ways to automate that capture process. And the idea is to seamlessly integrate it with all those business uh, critical processes and workflows downstream or down the line. We wanna be able to populate maybe even multiple processes at the same time because that's where the real value is. And that has implications for the business user and all of you who are information management or records management or governance experts and professionals. And AIM's done a lot of research and we've published lots and lots of report on new drivers for real time and intelligent capture capabilities. So we don't really need to make the business case for scanning paper. I hope not. Um, hello, IRS. Uh, we hope that folks listening in today know fully how much any inefficiencies that still exist uh, in your environment, um, how, how limiting that can be. And, and certainly paper is a big culprit of that. You know, as in the IRS photos, there are implication for implications for security. You know, people think for some reason that having things on paper uh, is more secure. Well, I don't think so if it's sitting in the cafeteria somewhere uh, in, a, in a general uh, office building. So security, storage, 
accessibility and findability. All of those things incur costs, they incur delays. But, you know, in spite of huge advancements in digitizing documents used in everyday processes, we know that some business functions are still uh, mired in paper. They're still largely paper based. So this is a great time to say hi again, Jeff. And um, that's kind of the world that you and your colleagues at OPEX are are, are living in as you try to say, you know, once and for all, help uh, let us help you uh, do this. Can you describe some of the uh, typical functions that you still see among your customers uh, when it comes to uh, paper-based processes? Yeah, so first of all, Peggy, thank you for setting this whole um, opportunity up in your your summary here at the beginning is something I couldn't agree with more, right? So scanning started by people wanting to take a picture of a piece of paper and then get it someplace else. You know, it's going to convert it from paper to someplace else. And you rightly called that end of process scanning. So the trend is really moving pretty quickly to the upfront scanning of the process. So captured at the very beginning. That's what we see. We see customers who want to take care of the paper now and then apply really good software tools that are out there today. There are phenomenal software tools out there today to um, move these along through the process. The, the second struggle, I think, is, and it maybe is even hinted in the pictures you're talking about that I haven't seen, but I have visited a number of IRS sites. They do sometimes look like this. Um, where the process is forcing that. So uh, I know that we are helping the IRS in a number of sites in a number of different ways, especially as it relates to anybody who has a check payment. So we're going to open all of those checks and process about what about the rest of the stuff that's there, right? So their process is to bundle that up and move it someplace else. That just seems so inefficient, but they aren't the only ones Trust me, there are a number of people who are really scanning when they really don't need to scan. Their own internal systems kind of drive their process. I, I uh, recently went to my doctor, and uh, as a lot of doctors do, they will say, well, we need to check your insurance card, your proof of identification. Uh, and my doctor makes me do it from the parking lot downstairs because he's still got... <laughs> COVID protocols, but then I have to go in, they take my card and they scan it. They do that every time I go in there. And I'm not saying my insurance card is paper. All I'm saying is the process is driving what they're doing and they haven't yet updated any processes that, that are impacting the way they're doing things today. But, but do you think corporate culture plays a role in just the yeah control. yeah I, I think or in the it, case or is it misinformation about some sort of you know security well thing? you know all of the above probably so I, i'm not familiar with all the stuff that my doctor has to um comply with as it relates to the state and the insurance and all those kinds of things it just seems there could be a better way and Believe it or not, we, we at OPEX, we've been doing imaging since 1996, and we started high speed. We had uh, our systems called the System 150 with IEM and, and most recently the Eagle that scanned out of the envelope 10 to 12,000 envelopes per hour. Now it's flying when you're capturing OCR and, and micro information and doing that. So we, we've been doing scanning high speed since 1996. And over the years then, We've refined our offerings to our customers with what else we could scan. And now we can comfortably say we can scan anything that comes out of an envelope and we can do it at one time. So the biggest thing we face then as we talk about these solutions is the fact that they'll say, well, but we've always done it this way. So I have been saying that to people that I talk to and as I have managed these resellers over the years, the biggest competitor you'll find in this scanning environment is we've always done it this way. We've always done it this way. And there's this resistance to digital transportation. And, and one other thing 
transformation, not digital transportation, transformation. One of the thing I think that drives some of these, Peggy, and maybe you guys have statistics on this that we don't, but we find it related to the size of the organization. So there are a lot of enterprise size organization, organizations that are driving digital transformation all the way across their enterprise, from HR to payables to receivables, all those things. But then you move downstream into the size, more down into the, the mid-market range of customers. And that's where you begin to see some of the reluctance um, to get on board with some of the digital transformation that can be out there. That's a, that's a fair comment. That's a good point. I think probably the only exception I see is in the consumer or retail world because you have even some mom and pop businesses that have, you know, they're using a cube or square or whatever it's called for their payment processing. And, you know, I, I, it is, I mean, nimbleness, yeah. I think, and, and certainly resources can play some role. Well, and even, even some, um, country related things we just had our sales meetings had a great time talking about our new scanners and our new processes and we heard a staggering statistic that check usage in europe is down 24 percent year over year so the need for some of opex equipment that has usually opened and then scanned checks and and payment coupons out of all going away in Europe. It certainly is declining fast in Canada. And we all know that it's declining here in the United States as well. So we keep saying, what else needs to be scanned? And how can we most efficiently do that? Well, that's a great segue, Jeff, because uh, we want to talk about when referring to scanning or imaging, there are considerations that people need to make in assessing the effort and the task, and you said it earlier, you know, is it worth it? It may not be. Uh, the goal is ultimately to convert paper to digital form, uh, but it's got to be, you know, it's got to be uh, significant enough. And let's let's look at some of these uh, things that that people really do have to take into consideration there. There's all the document preparation side of things. I mean, uh, you know, how many people, uh, how many bundles and mail and what have you still comes with uh, paper clips and and staples? Those can't go through most machines. Uh, the condition of the paper uh, itself, um, and you know, yeah, color. the uglier it gets. How long has it been sitting in that box? How dog-eared That's is it, right? And what what is needed downstream? Yeah, you're at, exactly right. Lots and and that and that then lends to decisions around whether it should be uh, scanned in batches, and that's got to uh, involve some kind of sorting. And then there's the scanning itself, and and I know you all are really really good about advising that in terms of needs, because there certainly is a plethora of uh, solutions and products out there. Do you need a flatbed? Do you need sheet feed? Uh, large format uh, book scanners and even specialty scanners uh, that are designed for uh, checks uh, usage. You just mentioned that statistic uh, coming out of Europe. So that's really interesting. And then, you know, the beauty, what, what I love to describe to friends and family uh, is about OCR, uh, optical character recognition, and those extraction and recognition technologies that, again, have been around uh, for so, so long, but that's where the real magic happens. That's just so amazing in terms of being able to lift that um, information object or, or piece or, or uh, intelligence and uh, populate all kinds of downstream uh, processes and things. So is there anything else we haven't thought of just in terms of um, kind of general rule of thumb around uh, the considerations beforehand. Yeah, I think you're right about scanners. Uh, I, I see your chart here about, you know, what kind of scanner you're going to need. Um, let's put it into the, the scanning bureau world for a second. They might be bidding on a job and it's going to be 54 boxes that need to be done in the next, you know, two months. 
they do a quick look at that and they say, well, I think we need this kind of scanner. Well, if somebody doesn't look close enough, like almost through every page of every folder, they're going to find that their scanner can't handle that. So you really have to do a good job of a knowing what your scanner can do, right? It, it can do a lot of things, but more importantly, what can't it do? Hmm. Is it duplex? Is it simplex? Can it do color on demand? Can it make some of those kinds of image cleanup decisions that allow that scanner to really push efficiencies at the next step? So all of those are great. You're right on it. Read the barcodes, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, you've got that for sure. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Service Bureau. And for the audience that may not know, there is an entire uh, ecosystem uh, of folks that do this kind of work for you. They uh, buy equipment from OPEX. They learn it really, really well, but they also get to know your business and maybe your particular processes. And their job is to uh, not let something like the IRS boxes in the cafeteria happen. They can whisk them away and, and digitize everything. So thanks for bringing that up. Well, as if trying to manage <laughs> That's their information it. chaos wasn't hard enough. Uh, organizations are now, all of us are facing challenges in our current digital economic environment. That's not unique uh, to issues around imaging and scanning, but it does impact it uh, very significantly. We are feeling supply chain uh, disruptions in everything. Uh, we're all paying more at the pump. Well, recently gas has come down, but at the grocery store, everything. And um, there is real fear of recession. And all of those things lead to more and more fluctuations of work and workflow. There's a lot of uncertainty in uh, the volume of our inbound information. Jeff, again, among your customers across so many different industries. Can you give some specific examples of these new challenges or how you're seeing it manifested? Well, there are a number of industries that require, let's say, a claims adjudicator to see something. So if in that um, insurance arena, there is a claims adjudicator and that claims adjudicator has been required to be at home for the eight months, then businesses have to figure a way to scan that someplace because I'm gonna mail that claim. Uh, that is happening, believe it or not, people are still mailing in claims, or perhaps it's an application uh, for a visa, perhaps it is a, a license plate renewal. Um, there are a number of things that the mail goes to a PO box, but then the person who is actually doing the function is home. So how do you work with your system to get those images sorted, identified, and to the distributed employee workforce that you have? Now, I will say there's great gains being made there, but that was a disruption. And sometimes from disruption comes creativity and innovation. And uh, that certainly is true. And we'll talk about this in a minute when you talk about the OPEX software that's attached to our scanner. But yeah, disruptions. I, I have seen it uh, in the government agencies and I've certainly seen it in healthcare where they're trying to get some of those images distributed to that, that dispersed workforce. So you're citing real COVID related things as well. Um, if, you know, we joked around uh, at, at our uh, organization, you know, if mail falls through the mail slot and no one's there uh, to get it, does it make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> does it get processed? Does it get handled? Right. Yeah, right. no, I agree. And, you know, we sent a lot of people home. We, we sent a lot of people home and some of these core functions, then there was nobody there to do them. And that led to then the accompanying labor challenges that came in. Maybe the person that's been there for years has gone home because that's the knowledge worker. And maybe the company tries to hire somebody to just run a scanner and I use just run a scanner and it's hard to find those people. So that labor uh, becomes critical to that whole scanning process. 
So that sounds like that has implications for uh, whether jobs are getting messier. You talked about, you know, condition of a paper. Uh, do you think that the economic conditions we've been talking about and, and implications, COVID or otherwise, are uh, causing scanning jobs to be messier, more inconsistent? And then I think you mentioned uh, folks not necessarily there at the mothership. Um, how does that affect uh, high speed or big batch environments? I know that's sort of two questions, but um, yeah. can you address? So that? I'll put them in two categories, and I think you're right. There's two categories there. There's there's the high speed environment where the paper tends to be very very clean, and sometimes the scanning bureaus we talked about a little earlier have that cleaner paper because it's been. It's been collated at a company X and they've hired this scanning bureau to just go ahead and archive scan all their stuff. So that, that can be very, very clean and that can be put through a high speed scanner. But more and more people are asking, what else can this scanner do? Can it handle my receipts? So think about expense reports, thinks about all the junk that's in some of those expense reports. People are doing those by paper, truckers, have to fill out those bill of lading and they have to fill out their hourly logs and all those kinds of things. That's got to get processed. So as we move down the trail of digital transformation and we get more embedded, that work is getting uglier because a lot of the folks have already done the easy stuff. Now they're looking towards the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, think about uh, typical prep and we we had a few examples of that but what's the typical preparation that's really needed for a lot of the work that you and your customers see coming yeah, in yeah we'll go back to the slide you had a little while ago there's the limitation of what can go through a scanner we're not going to try to put anything metal through it certainly um, there are challenges in putting torn paper dog-eared paper very brittle paper we had a challenge not too long ago of believe it or not, scanning freeze-dried paper that was trying to be rescued from one of the floods down in Louisiana. So in order to recover it without final damage, they freeze-dried it. And what was really interesting to us is our scanner was able to handle that really, really messy stuff. So there's, there is prep. So as OPEX designs, then, we try to eliminate that prep. We, we try to discover ways to design the feed of the scanner to be able to totally eliminate having to sit at another desk and get it all jogged and all those kinds of things. Uh, and, and we've done a really good job with that in our entire scanner line over the years. Really cut into that prep that is there. There are really good high-speed scanners out there. There really are. Um, but I ask them sometimes, uh, how do you do with opening the mail? And they say, oh, that's right. You got to get it out of an envelope, right? So that's one thing that OPEX has done phenomenally. And now with the release of our latest scanner, we've handled some of those sorting challenges and those prep challenges with our software. So we're beginning to, to really get into the weeds on how to sort. What are the labor? implications. We've cited that as one of our uh, current economic challenges, and it is. I mean, I think that's one of the most uh, uh, just significant pressures that executives are feeling. When you describe messiness, you describe some of the batch, you describe the just, you know, varied formats, etc. What are the labor implications for that? And, you know, how are organizations dealing with that? Well, first of all, I would say to you that it depends on the speed of the scanner. There are some scanners that one person can, you know, sit at their desk and scan one type of document over and over and over again. And there is, in some of those cases, a one-to-one -one relationship. But the faster the scanner and the more prep that's involved, the more labor you need to keep that scanner going. We, we've done some studies over the years and a, a number we're comfortable with is to saying that our scanners compared to, compared to almost every other scanner on the market can save labor 
between three and five FTEs because of the way we can eliminate prep. Another way to say it that we like to say is, how would you like to be able to do your scanning at the speed of your prep? Mm -hmm. That sounds counterintuitive, but if you're going to touch it, why not scan it at the same time? Rather than scan it over there, separate it and sort it over there, separate it by document type over there, and then finally run it through a scanner. Let's, let's just take it out of a folder and drop it on the feeder or drop it as a stack and go. So we think there's sometimes a, a three to five X gain in labor when you're looking at the usage of an OPEX device. Well, that's a great segue because you guys at OPEX have actually coined a phrase that describes uh, a brand new service that takes into account and overcomes all of these very, very real uh, economic challenges right now and their implications on all inbound information processes. So uh, this is a great chance uh, to uh, have you explain what you all mean by right speeding and right speed scanning. Yeah, so what you're looking at here in this picture is our brand new sorter. It's called the Gemini. And uh, if you know anything about uh, Latin and any of the languages, you know, Gemini really stands for twin. So we know, and over the years, we've just been experts in the one touch scanning, just come to the roller bed that you see there and begin to drop on the on the feed bed. But we also know that there is a need for high speed scanning. So now we're able to do both the high speed, Peggy, you've called it batch scanning, uh, take those larger batches of information and scan them at a, at a very high speed. Um, but what we have noticed as we have gone out and done the discovery that in a batch scanning environment, there's also that one really difficult document. Maybe it's a file folder. Maybe it's a glossy color page. Maybe it's something that is not comfortable for normal high-speed scanners. We now have the ability to uh, I'm look at the picture a little closer on the monitor screen. You might see a, a little blue button. All we would have to do is touch a button on that operator interface and the scanner will automatically slow down to allow you to scan that one really difficult document without shutting it off, without lowering an elevator, without going back and reconstituting the batch, and then immediately go back to high speed without having to get out of the job, having to change the batch. So we can do dual speed processing within a job, and uh, we can scan at either of these speeds depending on your type of work. So right speed, what is the right speed? Is it a high speed environment or is it a slow speed environment? We can do both here on Gemini or is it a combination? And that's where right speed is, right? What is the right speed for your particular kind of work? Scanning bureaus see all kinds of different types of work come in. One scanner does not fit all. We talked about that earlier. You know, a, a page scanner is not gonna help a scanning bureau very much. So that's where we came up with the right speed, Peggy. Well, and I think it's for that reason. I can hear some in the audience go, wait a minute, AIM is uh, solution agnostic. And uh, we are, we certainly are. And I think you will uh, uh, commend Jeff for uh, helping me to set the business case for even looking at new ways, new mindsets and new, new solutions. Um, and we're going to, uh, certainly wrap things up with some very solution agno agnostic advice. Um, but when something comes along that really does seem to uh, be somewhat revolutionary and answer uh, the incredible uh, pressures or friction that we're seeing around us, we like to talk about it, not to say it's the, uh, the only option out there, but we do. So humor us, if you will, for just another few minutes, I'm going to poke at this because you all have told us that you like to see things under the covers. What would the user experience be like? And can anybody do this? So I'm going to ask Jeff a, a few uh, very detailed questions about what this looks like, how easy is it? And then we're going to play just a real, real, real quick uh, video. 
Um, I think what you described, Jeff, is proprietary software and hardware. Uh, is that right? I mean, yeah. What yeah. can you share about, you know, what's the secret sauce? How does it actually Yeah, work? well, give me a couple of minutes right here because yeah. I think this is important. So hardware, which we have designed, which is an evolution of our design of uh, full page scanners that can do small documents down to the size of a business card up to an 11 and a half by 24 inch piece of paper all within the same job in the same feed. So we've we've really done a good job on the hardware here. We've made some significant improvements in the stacking. So to the left hand side there, there are five sort bins. Um, the stacking has been greatly improved there. Now I'm going to segue to software. We can also through software begin to make document decisions based on a barcode, based on finding an OCR scan line, based on the size of the document and put them in one of those five sort bins to begin the efficiency of getting certain documents to the right department. And we do that primarily through a tool that we call certain scan. It is the complementary software that both runs the scanner as well as allow us to do some very complicated job setups to be able to look for and read the barcodes. Um, we've always done a great job on um, checks and documents and things like that. Um, so this scanner can do all of those things. So it's been greatly enhanced. It's on an ergonomic table. Uh, the computer is all really clean underneath it, and it comes with that computer. It's a Windows 10 processing system. Again, we're we're moving forward and keeping up with the Microsoft demands. Um, so this is a very ergonomic scanner that, when we combine it with certain scan and the ability to process up front, what we're able to do then is help with these centralized scanning places to get certain kinds of documents to the next department and to the next department, to the next department and do that scanning right here through software. So, and we do it with one person. So that this- gonna be, That was gonna be my next question. If this we're is one really, person. If we're really, really uh, mindful of these pressures for labor, what is the user experience? How much training is required? And yeah, how many people need to, need to operate this thing? Cause it yeah. looks like a big, Big, powerful thing. Well, it's about the size of a desk. I could fit it here in my office. Um, it's about the size of the desk I am here. Um, and I can sit in front of it with a, an office chair or I can ergonomically make it stand up, but it is fundamentally run by one operator. The interface is a touchscreen monitor where I can log, log in with credentials, when I can log in with passwords so that I have security. I know you like to talk about security and all of those things that are important within an organization. Uh, we can apply all of those Microsoft settings to this device as you log in for network accessibility, et cetera. So uh, one person, once the job is set up and we're gonna come in and install it, our team will come in and put it into place for you. And then uh, our local account executive will come and provide training for the operator. It's all included in what we do. It's not a second, third, and fourth uh, charge or step. It's all included in what OPEX does. So we're going to show one person how to do it. Maybe we'll show a supervisor and uh, train the trainer kind of thing, but it's a, a very flexible and, and really a, an easy device to use. All right. Well, I think this video is less than a minute, and I do think that our folks have a a, a real interest in kind of seeing things under the covers and 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 what it looks like in a typical office. So uh, we'll we'll play that right now, and then you and I can chat about who's uh, who's a good customer for this because uh, it may not be right for everybody.
Yeah, I'd like to play that over and over and over again and talk about one thing every time I say it. Did you notice us find that receipt and use VRS to clean it up, right? It goes by so fast, but it's a it's a very, very powerful tool. It really is. So so who is the ideal customer? What what are the best, uh, uh, are there certain industries? Are there certain functions or processes? Is it appropriate for only certain types of organizations? Well, we know that this, and we have done this on purpose, the scanner has been designed for those people who have higher volumes of paper. Where there's where there's cleaner paper, um, right here near where I live in Delaware, there's a lockbox that uses a number of OPEX check scanning devices, and in the other room, there's a whole suite and fleet of high speed scanners. And we say, what's what's over there? Well, there are certain things that won't go on your scanner, Jeff. So what we've done is tried to develop a new tool to give them a one throat to choke process to the scanning process. One vendor. Uh, one person to hold responsible. So we've targeted them, but we we really understand that um, there's a whole world out there that we've only scratched the surface with in the high speed scanning environment. We want to do better there. Uh, we want to compete there. We know we've got some great competition. And I think that this tool becomes our Swiss uh, army knife, so to speak, to help us get to some of those more challenging places. Well, thank you for that. And while I know you'd love for everyone to put in an order right now uh, for the Gemini that's right. scanner, uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, I know you agree that before any solution is chosen, any solution is chosen, uh, folks need to take several important steps. So um, let me let you jump in there right now. You said you stole a phrase from uh, one of your customers when we were chatting earlier. What what was that? Yeah, no, I love this because I was having a conversation just like this, uh, Peggy, at AIM. We had a panel there at AIM with one of our partners. And as we sat and discussed how OPEX impacts a the market, they said what they do is design-wide and implement narrowly, meaning they want to find a scanner that can do the widest range and the software provider that can do the widest amount of different work and apply a solution widely. And then as they get different types of work, they can implement it narrowly, design wide, implement narrowly. But that really goes to some of the things that you and I have just talked about briefly, you know, you, you got to understand what this work looks like and you've got to discover the way it's being done today, right? You've got to discover what are the shortcomings of the scanning that you've done in the past. Where's your bottleneck? Is your bottleneck in the handoff from the scanning room to the accounts payable department where they have an entirely different system? So all of that discovery needs to be done. You guys have preached it for years. Uh, our account executives are trained to go out and you know, do a, a paper study, sit and watch the process happen. So you, you've got to spend a lot of time looking at it, get it right. Well, and, and what we've got here is, is not, again, it's not unique to a, uh, a scanning or an imaging or a digitization uh, type of project. It's really for anything. Don't even think about uh, looking at a solution until you understand the business problem and what it is you are trying to achieve. You've got to put in the hard work on the beginning to develop your strategy. And yep. that certainly includes gathering business requirements. And it should be a mixed group of folks, particularly your line of business users who are close to customers and are the ones that are leading those really, really, I call them almost higher order uh, goals that your executives care about, the ultimate end game of, you know, customer experience. So yep. uh, look at what content you've got, uh, where it resides, who owns it, uh, when and where it should be captured, how it should be captured, and who will perform that. And then, of course, uh, this almost sounds trivial, but, you know, implement the process and do have a good project management uh, plan and a team and definitely periodically assess it. Do you think, Jeff, that the Gemini kind of lends itself to uh, that kind of 
assessment and tweaking may be better uh, than others, meaning, you know, as the project has, has been rolled out, is it, is it more conducive to making kind of changes on the fly? I could, yeah, I, I really feel strongly about this one because that user interface we looked at a little bit earlier, you can design, in fact, the Gemini comes with uh, over 20 pre-programmed jobs. So maybe this one job programmed this way isn't perfect for the work you have. You can go try another one and it's all, it, you know, I hate the word low code because it's it's really a misnomer about a bunch of really smart engineers that made it as easy as possible for you to look at and do it, right? Um, but we have really designed an operator interface that design that jobs can be designed quite easily, uh, depending on the work. And uh, if there's a tweak that needs to be happened, this document needs to be rotated and it needs to be turned front to back. And this one needs a VRS profile. This one doesn't. All of that can be done very quickly and very efficiently on the Gemini. It's a very flexible tool. And if you don't like low code, how about no code? I don't think that exists at all. So we should strike that from our uh, our vocabulary. But Jeff, thank you. We've got one or two questions I see coming in, but I know folks might be wondering, um, okay, how do we how do we see this in action? Uh, how do they get in touch with you? And I believe you've got a, uh, a content asset that Nina has uh, teed up in our resource section. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so you can go to digitizeyourdocuments.com or you can go here to uh, info at OPEX if you have a further question. And there we've developed some tools that can help you do the analysis. We can do a, a workflow study. We can bring to bear one of our experts in your operation and get some hands-on uh, work with it. But we also uh, have developed internal to OPEX. And, and again, COVID was a problem, but it also drove a really interesting solution. We call it OPEX Live where we're able to, via technology, put you in a room with a Gemini scanner and maybe an operator and scan your work. We can work together to get your, what you think is impossible to scan paper, give it a try and do a live demo of this. Uh, we have our production units that are now available to us. So in the right situation with the right motivation, uh, OPEX has gone on site to do a proof of concept, and we should talk about all of those. We are more than happy to engage you on those fronts. That's that's great. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mason. I'm going to call out Mason, uh, great longtime friend of AIM. I'm not sure, Mason, if you're asking a question or you're making a statement, and it could have referred to things that Jeff and I were chatting about a little bit earlier, but Jeff Mason uh, makes a comment about uh, the image quality checking, and can you do that automatically and make sure that the images being captured are uh, really, really good? Yeah, absolutely. There's a there's a real time processing that does everything from blank page detect to uh, pixel count, uh, too much skew, not enough skew, all those kinds of things, and we we would handle that on the fly. But yes, image quality. Um, most people are scanning these days at natively about 300 DPI. That is also our native, but we can go up to 600 DPI if the job requires it. We can slow down and do full page color uh, duplex um, at a pretty good clip. I say pretty good clip because it all depends what you want done with it, right? We'll find the, the right speed. How's that? We'll find the right there speed for go. some of those difficult documents. There you go. A new term in our, uh, in our, uh, environment here. I know we're up against a uh, quarter to the hour, Nina, and, and you're keeping us to time. Uh, we want to invite everyone to check out uh, OPEX, and thank you for sharing that um, a resource with everybody, and I know you'll uh, make yourself available to any other questions that come in and, and we didn't get to. Um, we at AIM, of course, uh, continue uh, to encourage you to upskill uh, and take advantage of what our AIM Plus Pro uh, library of courses, and we have plenty around uh, the scanning and imaging and capture uh, field. So uh, we really, really do appreciate that. And we thank you for spending time with us. And Jeff, this has just been great. Uh, can't wait to see the Gemini in action ourselves. Yep. Thank so. you, Peggy. Really appreciate AIM and we're, our diligence to bring these things together. We enjoyed being at the, the spring conference uh, out there in Denver. 
and, and I compliment your team on uh, pulling this one together today as well. Thanks. Thanks so much. And Nina, I guess that's a wrap and we'll see you all next time. Absolutely. Take care, everyone.